Okay. Yeah, there we go. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, so priority was really the graduate internship that I had there was really the first time that I got to really dive into the sports world specifically in doing that stuff. So I would definitely say that was like the first time that I got to really see where my passion lied with it. And luckily for me, their marketing and PR and client services teams worked really closely together. So I got to kind of see all that went into that. And then I kind of took it off from there. Hmm. See, I see how you got that Chicago Bulls shirt on. I like that. <laughs> but um, I got to ask you, um, so obviously what advice have you gotten? Like when you started your career in the sports industry, what advice have you gotten? Not only from the ladies you just mentioned, but other people that are in the same industry. And also, um, did you get to cover any games throughout your career before getting into this business called athlete uh, relations? So to answer your first question about the advice, the best advice that I always got um, was, you know, just really like standing your ground with things. It's a really hard industry to be a woman in and to be able to set those boundaries and really stick with them is really important. And it's going to make all the difference later. My mom always said it takes a lifetime to build up your reputation and one second to ruin it. So making sure that the words that come out of your mouth and your actions are very thoughtful and meaningful and intentional. Um, so making sure that that's really something that you keep top of mind. Um, it's easy to get really close with clients and, you know, make jokes and things like that. And that's totally fine. And being on a personal relationship with them and having, you know, friendships with them and their families and their wives and their kids is great, but just making sure that you understand that like, not everybody's going to be like that and, and understanding the difference, I think is really good advice. And another piece of advice, and I talked about this a lot recently, but I just heard is, kind of starting with where you're at. So like a lot of girls, especially, I think are really hard on themselves when they first get into the industry because they see on social media, like, hey, I wanna be here. I wanna be at this position at this company, whatever. But you have to start somewhere, right? You don't just start at your dream job. Um, and I think it's really important to note that even if it's not in your right position, like you can use the things that you learn in those positions later in in later positions and maybe it is your dream job you have all this extra experience to bring to the table it's really important mm -hmm. um and i think that that's something that we kind of overlook because it's always like the end goal but you forget about the journey to get to that end goal hmm. so and also the second part was um did you get to cover like any games uh, before or no so i didn't ever do any broadcasting oh. i just don't it's not something that i'm really good at i respect the hell a lot of people that can i was just on a panel um, with Haley, she's a reporter for the Chargers a few weeks yeah. ago. And I remember just listening to her speak and I'm like, she's so good at that. Like, it's not me. I don't have it in me. It's not, but that's the thing too, right? We all have things we're good at. And we have things we're bad at. Like I'm, I would be terrible at reporting. So I didn't cover any games. I go to all the games. I get to see the guys. I get to be on the sidelines. I get to be courtside at NBA games. It's amazing. Um, but I don't, I don't recover. I don't even want to cover any of them. <laughs> so, um, I want to so so how did this come about obviously you're the founder of athlete relations and uh, how grateful are you to be in this position right now but take me back when you founded this uh, organization and company and um, what do you like about this and, and obviously it's, it's growing I see I see what you guys are doing amazing things with this yeah so it started about three years ago I like I said I'd already been in the industry for a while before that um, just kind of learning the networking and ins and outs in that situation um, I'm super grateful to have it to answer your first question. It's, it's something that I worked really hard to create and I work really hard to keep it going every day. So I'm really proud of it. Um, it, um, it, I wouldn't say it happened accidentally. I say that a lot, but it didn't, I, I, I was purposeful, but I would say it was a lot of happy accidents to get me there. Um, it was a series of moves and things like that, that kind of just put me in the position where I was ready to start it on my own. And the people that I got to meet to bring along with me as far as clients or networking or partners or things like that. Um, so really it was just a matter of, it was kind of like do or die. Like I had to do it now or I was never going to do it. So I, I started it three years ago. I just said, let's see what happens. COVID hit and we still made it through so far. And I'm like, you know what, we just have to keep pushing through these you know, challenging times and there's going to be ups and there's going to be downs. And at the end of the day, as long as you're still staying afloat and there's so many small businesses that were affected by COVID and I'm just lucky that we're still around. Um, so I just kind of start trying to keep focusing on that. Mm. So um, whoever doesn't obviously athlete relation, you guys work with athletes and players, but whoever doesn't know more about it, can you tell them like what, what else it, what else it entails? 
Yeah. So we do lifestyle management for the um, clients that we have. So that's really anything from simple things like dinner reservations, travel, um, booking full vacations and, um, you know, zoo days for the kids and helping with that. They get traded. We're doing all their moving situations. It's really anything that happens off the field or off the court. Um, and we do things as big as, you know, football camps for kids. We do engagements. We do help with wedding stuff. We help with birthday parties, charity events, like you name it, we kind of have our hands in it. So it's, I would say like event planning in a very <clears throat> either large scale or small scale basis. And then everything that falls in between. So we have partnerships with different companies that can help with those events or travel or things like that. Hotel partners, everything that can help make their lives easier and obviously save them money at the end of the day, which is obviously a great idea for them and something that's really important. And then just obviously helping them to save first and foremost for their retirement and planning for that life after their sport and really finding what their passion is, right? Because not every single athlete is going to be able to just coast off the money that they've made while they're playing. So really it's like, what is your passion? What do you want to do after your sport? So while you're enjoying all of these things, let's take them and strategically make them into something that we can plan for your life after football. Yeah. Well, you're a busy woman. <laughs> That's yes. crazy. Yeah. So, so let me ask you this, what would you say is the most toughest, toughest thing about this? Obviously, um, you, the, the things you just mentioned, but what do you say that when they get traded or signed with a di different team, what do, you, what do you say that's the toughest thing for them? Like when you're uh, constantly uh, helping them with the moving stuff and like going to different houses or obviously whenever they go to different teams. So we've done so many at this point that I don't think that it's like tough, I would say. It's kind of tough on them, just obviously like going over and over again and having to move so frequently, I would say is probably tough on them. But for me, I've done it so many times that it's, that one's actually pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Tough wise, it's a good one. Maybe when I think the toughest for me and it ties to the part on myself is when the kids are involved, right? Cause I want them to have like a good time and I want them to be happy. So if they, if a client gets moved and now we have to find new schools and things for the kids, like I'm really tough on myself with that because that's a lot more than just like, let's find you a rental house or hey are you gonna buy a new house or a car we have to ship something like this is like molding their children's lives right. so like I'm really big on like what I'm doing intentionally with their families um and making sure that they feel just as important as my client themselves um and it's something I think I've gotten really good in the last couple of years that because we do have a lot of uh, clients with children um but it's just something that I think I'm probably the toughest on myself with hmm. interesting um so what has it been like working with these athletes and current athletes that you work with? And obviously, you're, I'm sure you're not allowed to mention those players, but uh, what, what, has it, what, what has it been like just working with these athletes, getting to know their personalities, their families, and the, the way they go about their business on the, on the field and off the field? Yeah, and I'm pretty open about the players that we work with. I mean, they're all amazing. We're really lucky to work with some incredible guys and their families. Um, and each one of them brings something so unique to the table. I mean, Shelby Harris and I are somebody that we just oh. joke around all the time. He's just like a big goofball and like, we just <laughs> kind of go back and forth all the time. Um, but his wife is somebody I become really good friends with outside of all of this too. So it's, that's a really nice advantage. Um, Tay Davis is one of the sweetest person, like people I've ever met in my life. He's just super caring and thoughtful. So we're really lucky to work with him. Michael Thomas is so intelligent. He's Michael somebody that's that's awesome. Yep. He's on the Texans right now and he's from Tech or Houston, which is amazing. So we're getting to do a lot in his hometown and um, with his ASA youth that he runs. Um, he's like I said, super intelligent. He does a lot of externships with the NFL. So it's been really inspiring to get to watch him. I've been working with him for almost five years, actually. Wow. Um, so getting to watch him kind of grow in that space, too, has been amazing. Um, Josh Woods, who I've been working with since he was on the practice squad in the bears. So he's somebody that's been awesome to watch grow in his team and his space. And he just got re-signed. So that's a great feeling. Um, you know, each one of them brings something so unique and so inspiring to the table that it's like, for me, it's just amazing to get to watch each one of them in their career and then watching them, you know, start families with Juan Treadwell and his wife just had a baby this, this last year. Wow. Clayton Fedulum and his wife just had a baby this last year. So getting to watch them grow in that space too is really fun. Yeah, speaking of Shelby Harris, um, he just signed a new deal too, right? Um, with, yep. I think it was with the Broncos. Um, and uh, man, congrats to him. He's a heck of a player too. And uh, Yep, definitely really excited about it. He wanted to stay in Denver and this is a great, you know, multi-year deal, which is what he was looking for. So this is like definitely a big win for him. Yeah, so let me ask you this. So for you, uh, for yourself, what have you learned from the past year, obviously with COVID 
and then the sport shut down and nothing, no one else had nothing else to do. And obviously we're still going through the pandemic. And like you said, probably there's like a light underneath the tunnel pretty soon here for us. But what have you learned as a athlete manager and working with these athletes and uh, have you done like, have you been doing like zoom calls for the, especially last year, have you been doing like zoom calls when the sport shut down? So I think the biggest thing that I've learned, like, yes, zoom calls forever. But, um, I think the biggest thing I would say that I've learned is that you really just like can't predict what's going to happen. Um, I mean, look at the pandemic as far as what it did to the, I mean, we're mostly NFL at this point, so I can really just compare it to that, but look what it did with the NFL season. Like there was multiple months where we had no idea what was going to happen. They didn't even know if they were going to get paid. Like that's scary for them, you know? And so, you know, guiding them through a situation that I didn't even really know how it was going to end and how it was going to go, you know, that was something that like was a huge challenge for me. And just like, as far as like pushing my own personal boundaries of what I felt that I could do like accurately, um, that was a huge one. Um, and then I would say too, like now the other side of it, right. Like getting back into normal situations, like there are, there's still a life to be had, right. And there's still an off season and there's still, there was still a season, thankfully. So navigating that new space it's almost like the negative space right there's like all this stuff happening and then there's all this stuff not happening now so it's like how do we navigate that space too so I would say definitely just like trying to figure out how within that space to make sure that the guys still felt like they were being taken care of and then on top of that I mean we had so many clients that were donating money donating meals donating you know anything that they could do to help so just trying to make sure that at the end of the day like yes they were taken care of but like how can we use our services And I think we did this in the beginning of the pandemic. I talked about this. We did everything like pro bono. So we didn't charge any of our guys who weren't on retainer, obviously, but um, any of our guys for anything to do with COVID. So if they wanted us to help do donations or find charities to work with or meals on wheels or things like that, like we did that all for free because it's like, that's, that's how you help people in these situations. So that was really important for me. Oh, that's amazing. Um, So this is another two part question. The first one, obviously uh free agency is still going and do you have any like current clients that are still free agents out there that look that are looking for deals yeah so we've got a few so jordan howard's still a free agent i laquan's still a free agent we've got a few guys that are still kind of waiting for that you know final decision um but you know it's just a matter of kind of playing that waiting game some happen right away like shelby's was so quick I mean, honestly, I think it makes a difference too. If you're staying with the same team, Shelby had a great last couple of years. So like that made that really easy. Um, Laquan showed up this last year. Jordan had a rough, like kind of jump back and forth, but he's still proving himself doing his workouts and stuff all the time. So really it's just a matter of kind of waiting for them to find out where they're going to be going. Hmm. And then the, the next part here. So when it comes to getting uh, clients to your uh, company, uh, how, how, do you, how do you guys reach out to them to join your team? So honestly, it's really just word of mouth at this point. Um, you know, I'm lucky that all of my clients trust me 1000%. So anything that we do, a lot of times they are posting on social media or telling people about it. And we don't require that by any means. That's just, you know, them being thoughtful. Um, so we're really lucky that they're telling, you know, teammates and stuff. And when they post something and say like, Hey, we just got X, Y, and Z thanks to athlete relations, you know, that's good publicity for me. So it's really nice that they are able to, you know, vouch for us and kind of, you know, recruit people in that way. We literally just last week had a new client call with somebody that only literally only found us because they saw all the stuff that we were doing. I think it was on Shelby's story. Um, so just like that alone is so helpful that, um, I just rely a lot on that. There's so many, you know, agencies and financial advisors and, and things like that, that we work with as well. And we have, you know, calls with that. And it makes it so much easier because we get, you know, multiple intros through that, but there will be nothing that means more to me than my clients, obviously speaking well about the work that we do. Hmm. Um, So I want to get to an important topic that everyone should be talking about right now, women in sports and obviously for yourself. So for you, what's it like seeing you getting a lot of opportunities here? And also my co-host is a female, her, uh, Alyssa Charlson is my co-host and she covers Gonzaga basketball and she's, she's an indie right now covering the March Madness tournament. So uh, I'm really proud of her and, What's it like to seeing all the women getting more opportunities to coach male sports? Uh, like, like you saw Sarah Thomas, first female to, to be a ref in the Super Bowl, and you saw Sarah Fuller kick, uh, being a kicker, first female in the, in the Power Five conference game in a men's football league, and obviously Becky Hammond, you see. And w- what's it like just to see the growth of women in sports? I mean, it's so cool. It's so cool to be part of this too. I mean. 
you know, there's always been this glass ceiling that everybody talks about, right? And there's so many people that are saying it's getting shattered and all this stuff, but to physically see these things happening, being the first of something. And yeah. I just talked about this the other day as well, but kind of like how Kamala Harris said when she was, you know, becoming the vice president in the United States, I'm gonna be the first, but I'm not gonna be the last, right? So like, that's what we're seeing right now. We're watching all of these first. Um, and regardless of politics, team preference, sport preference, it's cool to see. Like at the end of the day, like you don't have to agree with every single, you know, whatever it may be. And it might not be your favorite team and you might not agree with the call that a ref makes. But the fact that we have people in these positions now that are not just men, it's people, it's women and men. It's amazing. It's so cool to see. It's so cool to be a part of and to be able to, you know, shine light on that and, and to be able to give them the same opportunities. And the point is, it's not because they're women. It's because they have the same qualifications, if not more, than the men in those positions, but the men have just been getting them before. So now they have the same opportunities and it's, hey, we're gonna take whoever's best for the job. And in this case, it's gonna be a woman. And that's cool to see. Like that was really like an awesome, like 2020 for me, like highlight is watching how many things with that happen. I mean, Kylie Brown on the Browns, weirdly enough. Yeah. Uh, like that was such a fun thing for me to be like, oh my God, like that alone, cause we had a client on the Browns, I should preference that. Um, like that alone was cool to get to watch. And then obviously all the coaches on the box. So now we are going into Super Bowl. We've got a ref, we've got coaches, like you said, the kick, we've got Sarah, like it's just, there's so many moving pieces and it's like, it's overwhelming in the best way possible. Yeah. It's really amazing. And, um, so my next question here, what advice would you give young kids or young, uh, young athletes, or uh, even kids that are trying to be in the same uh, career as you being a manager or agent or, uh, to work with these athletes. So what, what advice would you give them? Yeah. I, like I said earlier, I would say just to start with where you're at. I mean, there's going to be so many opportunities that come your way that maybe don't seem like the perfect fit or exactly what you want to be doing, but really just like take those, you know, opportunities and see what you can make out of it. If I would have just said no to a graduate internship because it was after college and it was unpaid. And I thought that I should be paid by then. Like I wouldn't be here. And right. honestly, I wouldn't have learned about client services because it's not something that's really highlighted. It's just kind of tucked into the agency every now and then. And some agencies don't even have it. Um, so it's really just a specific like, hey, I'm going to start with this thing and I'm going to run with it and see where it takes me. And, you know, you might not stay in it or you might learn, hey, I love this thing and I didn't even know about it before. So I always say, like, just start with where you're at. Network the hell out of this opportunity of just being at home all the time. And like, go with whatever comes your way. It's gonna, ultimately it's gonna pay off. Like I'm really big in my faith. And like, I truly believe that like whatever God has for you is going to come for you. So whatever you're doing now is only preparing you for that moment. Like uh, I always say, I, I always go back to Drake's uh, song, God's plan. There you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, we do this fun little segment on, on our show. It's called the rapid fire segment. I don't know how much time you left, but you have left, but do you, do you have time for a quick yeah. Uh, yeah, all right sure. so i'm, I'm going to put you on the spot right away so obviously since you've been you're from chicago and now you're in new orleans uh which all right better food wise chicago or new orleans that's such a good question okay so my answer to that question is local specific food like new orleans type food new orleans does a great job like seafood you know crawfish the whole nine yards beignets everything they do an amazing job food in general i mean you name it, we've got it, Chicago. Yeah. Chicago's got every type of food. We kill it with the pizza, we kill it with hot dogs. And if it makes a difference, I still ship the Chicago style hot dogs and Lou Malnati's pizza frozen to my house. <laughs> so I think I have to go with Chicago in that one as far as mass amounts of food, but as far as like specific types of food, New Orleans got it, you know, really good. Every single corner, really good. <laughs> uh, Kawhi Leonard's laugh or Kevin Hart's laugh? Uh, Kawhi Leonard. That's such an awkward situation, and I'm all for it. <laughs> so uh, obviously, uh, Chicago and New Orleans are big sports towns. So what, what's it? What was? What's it like just to experience both cities? And obviously, Chicago had a lot of legends, Michael Jordan, for example. And then you have Drew Brees here, who just retired. So uh, what, what would you? What do you? What do you? What has meant? What has the, uh, this Michael Jordan and Drew Brees meant to the city of Chicago and New Orleans? <laughs> Honestly, I don't think I've been here long enough to speak on the Drew Brees thing. I've only been here for two years, but I will say since being here for two years, I've realized how much he's meant to the city as far as like through other people. Um, I would say Chicago in general is obviously like a much larger sports town just because of the fact that we have 
five, six, I guess, major sports teams. Um, sixth being the White Sox, but because <laughs> I'm a Cubs fan. Um, but we've got, you know, so many big teams and it's such a marketable city as far as the sports teams go. And like, I was born in the middle of the Bulls, you know, era. And I was also growing up during the Hawks era. I work with the Bull, or I work with the Bears. It, it, there's so many moving pieces and like the Cubs games for me are like staple of going home. I'm literally planning my bridal shower right now, like hopefully around a Cubs game. Like that's how important it is. So um, <laughs> I would say like in general, I tend to like go back to my roots with that one. But I will say like, I think a lot of the stuff with New Orleans and again, I wasn't here, so I don't know enough about it, but like Katrina and all that and like how the city kind of came together afterwards and like how much the saints like helped to like have that sense of community. And again, I wasn't here, but it like very much like shines through like the people here and how much Drew Brees and the saints mean to them in that sense. So uh, all right. uh, are you a Bears fan too? Unfortunately. Uh, so uh, who, who's your favorite Bears player of all time? I mean, I think the easy answer is Walter Payton. Um, I will also like, just like, I feel like that's like everybody's answer. Um, I, I have a hard time picking one because one, I feel like we haven't had a good quarterback since like literally 1920. Um, but I also think that, you know, there's different positions like and also like again I've worked with some of them like Josh Woods and Jordan Howard and Prince of Mukamara that I've gotten to work on you know personal levels with like that makes them my favorite so I think that's kind of hard I also am really good friends with Jared Payton who's Walter's son he went to my high school so he and I are really close so like I like have a little soft spot in my heart for him even though I wasn't alive so um I think that it's definitely like a toss-up on that one yeah, actually, we had uh, Lance Briggs and uh, Brian Urlacher on the show uh, uh, last year. I mean, Brian, Acker, Brian Urlacher was on this year, and then we had Lance Briggs last year, and it was an honor talking to both of them. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, so for you, obviously, where, where, do you, where do you guys go celebrate when the Cubs won the World Series? So I was actually living in L.A. at the time. I was just telling this story the other day. It's funny. I was living in Los Angeles at the time working, and my dad happened to be there for work, weirdly enough, too. So we went to a little bar in Brentwood, Los Angeles, which I thought was just going to be like us watching it. Everybody was rooting for the Cubs. I mean, decked out people were in the streets. Like it was amazing. And honestly, all my family lived in Chicago was like, I would have rather been somewhere else because Chicago was so slammed packed. You couldn't even go anywhere to celebrate or like even go outside. So like, I honestly think we had the best situation. We got like beers and we were just like running around and celebrating and we were crying and it was the whole situation. And honestly, I think like, I wouldn't have traded that for anything. Hmm. Uh, toughest contract you ever done? Toughest contract. Um, that's a good question. Um, I would probably have to say, Ooh, I wouldn't say toughest, but I would say, I'll say this. I'll say most interesting. So Shelby and I were already working together and Shelby and Tay had the same agent. So I met Tay at Super Bowl just in passing and literally, and this was like two, three Super Bowls now ago, uh, Tay and I just like, again, met in passing and became friendly and started working together from that. And he like, again, we had no idea about each other before then. Like I had not met him yet. He didn't know about athlete relations. And we literally met at Super Bowl over drinks at lunch with his agent and Shelby, who notoriously orders tequila shots wherever he goes. And that's <laughs> how we started working together. So that's definitely probably my funniest contract. I don't really have any tough ones. I like okay. to sell myself on those. <laughs> so the last two things here, um, our, our team is part of the Hugh Jackson Foundation, obviously a former NFL coach. Um, he's trying to get back into coaching, but um, he's mainly focused on this foundation. And we're really, we're ambassadors for them. And we're really grateful to be part of it. We're trying to help prevent human trafficking and making sure the kids stay safe and making sure the community's uh, much safer too. Um, and so I'm going to send you the page. You can check it out. Um, it's really inspiring what they're doing. And uh, till this day, human trafficking is still the worst. And right. we're, we're trying to help come up with ways how to prevent it. It might take a while, but we're, we're working on it. And hopefully it comes to fruition soon because I don't like seeing this. And um, this is really important to prevent this. Definitely. Let me know how I can help. I'm, I'm, that's horrible. Mm -hmm. And the last thing here, would you like to say anything to all the nurses, doctors, and the center workers right now? Oh, for sure. So my actually funny, this girl is a, um, is the healthcare worker and I see how hard they're working, especially still on like COVID and 
all the things that they are doing just to keep all of us safe. So huge shout out to them and big thank you to them. And obviously all the ones that are, you know, on COVID floors specifically still. And I know that things are getting better with the vaccine, but we know that they're still working behind the scenes and everything. So it's super important to give them a shout out. Yeah, well said. And tell her that I said, thank you for your service. And Absolutely. So that wraps up uh, episode 731 with at least manager and before, with at least uh, re, uh, relations, Ali Rating. Uh, I just want to say thank you for joining, joining the show today. It's truly an honor. Um, I learned a lot and you're such an inspiration. And actually, we would like to have you back as a returning guest at some point so you can meet the full team uh, for yeah. the show. But um, like I said, thank you again and uh, keep up the great work. You're hardworking and uh, you, you have a lot of great clients with you and uh, you and your family stay safe. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Anytime.